a bit of a story this time. And us old wrinklies, you know, it's especially apposite for us. It's all about intense beauty serum. There was a paper published online in 2009 in the British Journal of Dermatology called A Cosmetic Anti-Aging Product Improves photo Aid Skin, a Double-Blind Randomised Controlled Trial. Boy, that sounds seriously scientific. My wrinkles are getting a bit scared already. And what it reported was a statistically significant improvement in facial wrinkles as compared to baseline assessment, P equals 0.01. Now that traditionally means really quite strongly statistically significant. Strong evidence we've got a real effect. Whereas, of course, it was a control trial, vehicle treated skin, that just means the placebo uh, skin uh, cream that does nothing, was showed no significant improvement. P is 0.11. No sign of statistical significance there. Well, on the face of it, that looks like pretty clear cut. The new stuff does the job, reduces the wrinkles, significant. And the comparison, no placebo effect, not significantly improved. And the tabloids went to town on this media reports, significant clinical improvement in facial wrinkles. My skin is getting excited just reading about it. And cues forming outside Boots the Chemist, you know, the drug stores up and down Britain. As people battered down the doors, the wrinklies battered down the doors to buy number seven, protect and perfect intense beauty serum. They pay people to make up these names, you know. Intense beauty serum, boy, that sounds great. Okay, hold this thought just for a minute. Separate question. Suppose you had two results like this. Here's one result, a mean and a 95% confidence interval. And here's another result, a mean and its confidence interval. What does this picture say to you? Well, I suggest it probably says they're pretty much similar. They overlap a hell of a lot. If we got this result, then we repeat and got that, we'd think we've got pretty good uh, rep repetition. Let's say I label it like this. This one is the active agent. This one is the placebo cream. I have a scale along here, improvement in facial wrinkles. Perhaps you're getting a hint where this is going. I turn on this. In fact, if we've got a confidence interval here, that is about that distance away from zero, the p-value, trust me, is 0.01. This configuration indicates a quite strongly significant effect that this mean here is significantly greater than zero. Whereas in this other case, the confidence interval captures zero, so p will be greater than 0.05, no statistical significance, and in fact p is about 0.1. So the picture I showed was just a different representation of exactly the intense beauty serum result, which was reported using p-values. Significant here, not significant there. Well, in fact, the people who did this first made some um, serious statistical blunders by comparing these two by comparing p-values. They should have compared them directly, and if you did that, um, there's no sign of a difference. And their original paper was criticised severely and they issued a uh, revision which said a non-significant trend towards clinical improvement. I'm falling asleep as I read it. And of course, that sort of statement does not sell tabloid newspapers and people do not queue up outside Boots. So what's the conclusion from the Boots anti-aging cream, the intense beauty serum case study? Two different formats for reporting data gave two very different messages, but only one of them is correct. This statement, and there are millions of these statements in some of the world's top research journals, this is statistically significant, this is not. Well, that uh, may strongly suggest there's sort of a, a seductive allure of certainty. Here we have something, there we don't. Null hypothesis statistical significance testing, NHST, promotes black and white thinking, dichotomous thinking. An effect exists or it doesn't. 
there is an effect or there's a zero effect. But in fact, the world is a million shades of grey. It's not just black or white. It's not just exist or don't. And um, NHST sets an arbitrary criterion to separate black from white. And that means we miss all these shades of grey. It gives us seductive certainty, but that's illusory. Confidence intervals can prompt a much better appreciation and interpretation. And a confidence interval picture gives us a much better understanding of what's going on. Well, don't take my word for it. You should never take my word for things. You should never just believe one little tricky example, entertaining though it might be. We want evidence. And this is evidence of statistical cognition, our research field. And you can read about it in this um, article here, which you can download from this URL. And um, we sent this picture, just two means with confidence intervals and a little cover story. This is one study, this is another study, here are the results. We emailed that to the authors, to researchers of um, journal articles published in top psychology and medical journals. And we asked them, uh, please rate uh, how in your eyeballing, your impression, these two results are broadly consistent or different, similar or different. And then we asked them, please make a few comments why you gave that response. And the interesting thing was that um, they tended, about half of them, when they made their comments, uh, made some comment invoking significance testing. They say things like, well, one of the intervals includes zero, so not significant. The other does not, so it's significant. So we've got significant and not significant. There's some difference there. But the other half did not uh, invoke significance testing or p-values, and they said things like, well, these two intervals overlap a lot, or, oh, they're really quite wide, aren't they? And uh, note that in the email we sent them, we just showed them the picture, no mention of uh, significance testing or anything. Well, we then analysed the ratings of those people who mentioned significance testing, and 60% of them rated these two results as different to some extent. Whereas those people who talked in terms of intervals and did not mention significance testing or p-values, almost all of them, 94%, rated the two results as pretty similar. And they were correct. So our conclusion from this little empirical study is that, first, even if researchers see confidence intervals, unfortunately, they often think in terms of significance testing. But you get a better interpretation you you're more likely to understand that these two things are consistent, quite similar, if you avoid thinking of p-values and think in terms of intervals. So bottom line, just report confidence intervals. Don't confuse the picture by reporting p-values as well. And at least in this simple but typical situation, people are likely to uh, understand it better. And you can read about this study at that URL there. This is um, a bit of evidence, statistical cognition evidence, towards uh, a supporting, uh, contributing to the way I believe we should do statistics, which is in an evidence-based way, just as you in your professional practice want to do evidence-based practice, base your choice of therapeutic procedures on research evidence. So in statistics, uh, you shouldn't just take my advice or anyone else's advice about what to use, you should look for the evidence. And here is some evidence that if we use confidence intervals rather than p-values, actually we'll do better. So I argue that we should be moving on from significance testing to what I call the new statistics, estimation, confidence intervals and meta-analysis. Not that those techniques are really new, but they would be new for many of our disciplines. And um, there have been absolutely uh, uh, highly scholarly and devastating critiques of significance testing for more than 50 years, and here's a little summary at this URL. But even so, it sort of persisted, maybe because of this seductive allure of, um, even though it's misleading, of certainty. Much better to report confidence intervals and give estimation interpretation, and to use cognitive evidence to guide uh, what we do. Yes, it's time for a crusade. The new statistics bring it on. And you can download um, uh, all these goodies from this website. 
and I invite you to join the crusade.